Greetings, friend. I will show you how to solve this competitive puzzle from round three of the Sudoku Grand Prix. Not only that, I'll explain all my tips, tricks, and strategies as I do it. Click below if you want to give it a go. With that, it's solving time. So I competed in this competition. And what I remember is kind of looking across here, seeing a little bit of the symmetry in the puzzle and seeing how these fives interact. There's only one place for a five here in block one. And then if you look at the eights, now the eights cut across and this eight comes up so one place left for an eight and then with the nines in rows one and two you can solve for a nine right there so all that was pretty quick and then the other thing you may notice you now this seven cuts across here in row three so it means the sevens are a pointing pair up here in block three so it's a pointing pair they have to be somewhere in the block and they're limited to that row so they can't be anywhere else along the row which means sevens can't be there and because of this seven the seven can't be in this spot so you can actually solve this cell for a seven uh, another thing to keep in mind, see how the six cuts across row two? The sixes are now point pair limited up here in block one. I remember seeing all this, you know, this six comes across, and then the only place left for a six in block two is right there. And then with these two fives, the five right there, so you can do a lot of damage here. You can get a lot done pretty quickly. And I'm going to show you this really neat trick that I found as I was doing it. And I think you're going to really like this. Uh, I had, I just messed up the puzzle before that puzzle three, so I was kind of down but this one I kind of rebounded and did a little bit better and I was real excited about how how this puzzle played out for me okay after doing all of this kind of come down here and what you might notice is you got these sevens cutting down and so there's only one place left for a seven up here in block eight and then now it makes it for the nines you see how this nine cuts down this nine cuts across there's only one place left for a nine nice I did also was able to solve for this one up here noticing a little bit of that and again the, the symmetry the way this was shaped here i remember coming down here and going okay is there something i can solve down here as well and sure enough since we have that nine mark there's only one place left for a nine so that one and nine are kind of shaped pretty similar pretty cool uh, i want to kind of point that out and then i think keep in mind you see how this three cuts across that means the threes are a pointing pair down here in block seven um i'm not going to use marks but i do want to Show you that that these are threes are limited here because this is going to come and play a little bit later as i did some more solving it's going to lead up to that cool trick i was talking about okay so you got this four coming up column five so the fours are limited these two spots here and so with these two spots you know four the four can't be anywhere else along column six you got this four coming down you got this four cutting across so this cell has to be a four and so we can mark that four and then what you're looking at is you got a one two six right there and then cutting across you have a one two Three, but what you'll uh, something else cool, and this is where the the neat thing you kind of notice is a lot of these puzzles won't have more than the top seven strategies. You're talking about the top seven strategies. We're looking at naked, hidden, single. We're looking at uh, naked and hidden pair, claiming pair, pointing pair. So I've shown you a few of those already. Um, you're not going to go beyond that. And if you're just not that familiar with those seven strategies, I do have. A free Sudoku solving guide covers those top seven strategies. You'll be able to solve puzzles like this and over 80% of all the Sudokus you're going to find. So look at the pinned comment below if you want to download that free solving guide. But what I noticed here is since there's a one here, and this will be one, two, three, this cell has to be a two or three. But if you come up here, I noticed that with the seven cutting across, this is a two, three, seven. This also has to be a two or a three. And so it creates is this nice naked pair. I'm going to color that in purple, okay? And just kind of show you that this is a naked pair of a two, three. You're like, okay, Timberlake, what's the big deal about that? Well, you remember how this is a three right here? Three can't be there. I remember seeing this, having these pointing pairs of threes. And you go over and go, what can be in this cell right here now? Well, it can't be a one. It can't be a two or a three because of this, you know, the three and the two, three right here. It can't be a four, can't be a five, can't be a six. It could be a seven, but it can't be an eight or a nine. So this cell actually can be solved for a seven because it's two, three, naked pair. That's pretty cool, right? Well, let's take it one step further. What could this cell be? It can't be a one. It can't, it could be a two, but it can't be a three because of the pointing pair. It can't be a four, five, six, seven, eight, or nine. So this cell now has to be a two. And so that's why. This pointing pair plays uh, wonderful here, all right? So you know that that can't be a three, it has to be a two. But not only that, you remember this was a two or three? Once you solve this, you can solve this cell right here.
for a 3 and then solve that for a 2. And this reminds me of another Sudoku Grand Prix puzzle that I solved involving naked pairs and pointing pairs. I'll put a link to it at the end. You do want to check that out if you want to solve puzzles like this even better. And while you're at it, subscribe to Smart Hobbies. All right, let's remove some of these colors because now we're going to be able to make some more great solving here. Because once you put this 2 in and you got this 2, now we can solve this cell for a 2. If you remember, there was a 4 in one of those two spots. You can actually solve this cell for a 4. And with this 1, you can solve this cell for a 1 and this cell for a 3 to finish block 2. And now you see what you have. It's called a full house here. All right? And with full house, it means you have 8 cells filled in. You can fill out the other cell. What does that have to be? It actually has to be a 2. And now with this 2 coming down, you can easily see that the only place left for a 2 in block 8 is right there. And we have our 3. And you remember, this is a 1, 2, or 3. So we can solve for the 1 right there as well, which leaves us here with a 1 or a 6. Can't solve the 1 or the 6 yet, but we've made a lot more progress. So if you look right here, you can see there's only two cells remaining. So I always want to go where there's a greatest amount of restrictions. And we're missing a 1 and we're missing an 8. Well, I have a 1 cutting across. So I remember being able to solve this for the 1 and solve that for the 8. Nice. And now what you can do is kind of work our way. We have the 2 or the 3 there. Uh, we're going to 6B here in column 9. Well, it can't be here because of this 6. And it can't be here because of that 6. So this actually has to be a 6. So we can make that mark for the 6. And then, you remember, this is a 3 or 7. we got a full house right here. So that it has to be your 3 because there's no... Uh, because of the 3s, I mean, in that spot, because 3s can't be there. So it has to be a 3. This would be a 4, 6, but you got your 4 right here. So here's your 4, here's your 6. And you see it just kind of plays it. And you might notice this is kind of cool too. You got this 4, 8 coming down here. You got this 4, 8 coming up. And you got this 4, 8 cutting across. So right here, this is actually another hidden pair of 4, because the 4, 8 has to be somewhere here in block 4. But we just show that these are the only two cells it could be. So I'll just kind of do that in orange to let you know that, hey, this can't be a 4 or an 8. So if you look at the rest of the block, what do we need? It looks like it would be a 6 or a 9. Well, I got a 9 right there. So this actually has to be your 6, and then this would have to be your 9. And now you see right here, we got two cells remaining, a 3 and a 9. So here's your 9, and here's your 3. Pretty cool, huh? I love how you can keep making these solves. And then what you're looking for here is we still got this 1, 6, uh, but you got the 6 there, so now this is your 6, and that's your 1. And now we can finish row 9 with our 3, and then put our 1 right there. And then with these two 1s, and these two 1s, we know we can solve this cell for a 1. And so we have two cells remaining in column 1. So we're looking for, it looks like a 2 and a 3. I got my 3 right here. So here's your 3, here's your 2. So this is where you want to go. At this point, you're... You have most of the cells filled out, so you're going to go right back to cross hatching and just working at pairs and cross hatching. That will get you quickly through the rest of this puzzle. So we have two cells remaining here. We're looking for a six and a seven. I got my six there. So here's your six. Here's your seven. And then you can kind of look across here and go, okay, what am I missing? It looks like a four, five or an 8. Uh, since these are all in three different cells, actually can't solve the 4, 5, or 8 yet. But what's kind of neat, remember this is a 4, 8. Well, right here, you got a 4, 8. So this is a 4, 8, and that's a 4, 8. A 4, 8 can't be anywhere else along row 6. So what else are you missing? Let's get 2 and a 3. So I actually know that the only place left for a 2 would be right here. And then this would be your 3. And now we can solve this 3 and solve that for 7. And with these two sevens and this seven, we can solve this cell for a seven. Finish our full house. Always want to do that when you have the opportunity with the five. I remember we're missing two fives. And I also remember we got a four, five, eight. And I got my five and eight right there. I know I can solve all three cells with my nice, neat trick. Because this is the five and eight. This has to be a four. Because the five's here. This has to be your five. And that has to be your eight. And now we can fill out that four, eight, four. I'll get rid of the colors. I'm just kind of showing you how much mileage we got off of that nice hidden pair of the 4 and 8. And we have two cells remaining. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. We're looking for an 8 and a 9. I just looked to see which one I can glance up in the column first. I saw the 8 up there in column 8. So that's going to be your 8. And as soon as I get out of that color mode, we solve that for an 8 and solve this for a 9. You need to watch this other video if you want to solve competitive Sudoku even better. Thank you so much for watching.